uh, and this little snippet is for how to create a data entry form. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go into access. And, and as I say, Aaron has kindly uh, created a template for us. We can see that on database tools, we've got the relationships in here. They're already set up and we can see that the data has been entered in here. So this is available to you uh, for your use for this next bit. Now, whenever we're creating a data entry form or a query or a report, you are going to go to create uh, the create tab. Matt, stay with us. Yep. And in this instance, we're going to go to form. Now, you can create a blank form, and that's how I'm going to show you very quickly in this video. You can do form wizard and you can do uh, form design, but I'm going to go to blank form for this. Now, the two, somebody remind me, what two data entry forms do we need to create? Create request. OK, so I'm going to do a request form. So. I'm going to go add existing field. So the first thing I'm going to do is property sheet and I'm going to click on. I'm going to make sure I'm in form design here. I'm going to click on the gray area at the bottom. So the gray area, not the actual grid here. I'm going to click on the gray area. And in the property section, I've got something called record source. Now in record source, I've got all the tables and all queries that are available to me in my database. Now, guys, if you are, I, I really appreciate people want to get on with this and on all the rest of it. I'm going to keep you very, very small amount of time. Um, so just listen up if you would, please. Because I'm making a request form, I'm going to link it to TBL request. OK, now that's really important because now when I go back to my form here and I go back to form design at the top, no longer in property sheet, I go to add existing fields. Now, add existing fields will now, because this form is linked to the request table, it's got all the fields from my request table. Yeah, and I can drag those on now. I can just simply click on it and I can drag it on to my form and that will go on originally as text boxes, I believe. So I'm just going to quickly drag those on. Now, Aaron has very, very kindly set up some validation. So if you're not sure and you want to look at how he's done it, he set this up as a drop down box on the table. So when I drag it from my field list onto here, it already comes as a drop down box. But if you're not sure about that, if you want to change that, you can go to the top little uh, design box up here. You can choose drop down box. OK, and you can. Oh, no, it's not going to work. You can drag one on and create one. Now, if you're going to create one, I want to get the values from another table or query. If I want to pick a customer ID from my customer table, I select the first option. If I want to type in the values, yes, it's a certain amount of values. Put your phone away, please. You're going to click next. Which table are you going to get the values from? Well, in this case, it's customer. Which values do you want to show? Now, if it's me, I always put ID and customer name in. Because the ID on its own doesn't really make a lot of sense to me, and so the name will give me a little bit of clarity. It's a bit more human. And when I click next, I'm not bothered about sorting. I'm going to unhide the key column because it's the key that I need to store in the booking table, in the request table, not the name. The name is just there because it makes a little bit more sense as a human. Uh, then I'm going to click next and then I'm going to store the values I want because remember this is a booking table. Yes, for my support requests. So I need to store who's booked it. So which field am I going to store this in? Well, hold on a minute. I'm going to store it in customer ID because it's the customer ID I want to store. Uh, and then it's in there. Now, what I end up with is two identical fields. Yes, two identical drop down boxes. Just one gives me a little bit more clarity about what I'm picking. They both do exactly the same thing. Now, I'd repeat that and I keep dragging these things on. Yes, and if you've set up 
like you've done with your date time uh, fields here. When I run this, you'll see that it's a date time picker. Yeah, you've done all the hard work on, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, thank you, on the de table design. Yeah, so if you do the table design, the forms will be a lot easier to do. Now, you set that up, yeah, and make sure that's all, got all the relevant fields on that you need in order to book a request. And then you might choose to have some buttons on there. Now, the button is at the top here. It's the uh, rectangular box at the top, and I'm just going to drag that out. And then it will give you this wizard. And this wizard's really, really helpful, particularly if you're adding a new record, yes, a new booking request, record operation, save record is one thing that you would want to do. OK, save records So record operations, save records. Now it will then ask you, I always uh, err on having text because it's clear on what it is and then I save it. Now there's one last thing I want to show you on creating a data entry form. And for this, I'm going to go to the property sheet at the top here and you'll see that this comes here. I'm going to click on the form, it's uh, the gray area and I can see that in the property sheet, the top box, it's gone to form. If I click on the grid, it goes to detail. I'm not bothered about detail. I'm bothered about the form. And I'm going to go to data. Now, there's one property. If it's going to be a data entry form, I need to, it, to, to include. Now, this is because if I put that save record on there and I don't change this property I'm about to, it will overwrite a record you've already got, the first record, OK? So that means it will change your data set and you're going to have some real problems. But by changing the data entry option here from no to yes, that will give me a blank canvas, a blank form. Yes, and when I save the record, that will save that new record to my database. Does that make sense? rather than overwriting one that already exists. So I'm not going to create the whole thing. I mean, what myself, Aaron and, and Tommy and Scott will do is we will go back over this and we'll make sure that there's a complete set of forms and queries for this. But I want you to try and create the data entry forms. If you get chance, I want you to move on to the queries and I will do a, 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 another little recording this afternoon. I've worked with Ethan this morning on trying to find some uh, ways around developing the uh, time difference one. And there's a slight there's a specific function that you need for that. So I'll record a video and if you can have a look at that this week for homework. Does anybody have any questions on that? So unless you've got specific questions about what we've been doing pre break, yes, and just after break. I want you to either use your own, yes, that you've got the data in, or use Aaron's version that we've got on screen, which is available in the file section, to create the data entry forms, which shouldn't take you very long, and then start to think about making the queries. Okay, thank you very much.